Shake datters are the heart of using your camera shaker. They control how the shakes behave. While you can manipulate shakes at runtime, they still use the shake data as a template or preset. Real quick, how you make a new shake data is pretty easy. You just right click, create, first gear games, moods camera shaker, and then shake data. Before I begin, I have a quick script called repeat shake. This is just so I can test my shakes as I make them at runtime. I have a public boolean called restart. When ticked, it will restart the shake. And then I have a reference to the shake data I'll be using called shake. And if I open that up, you can see an update. If restart is true, set it false, then call start repeat, which will stop the curatine. It will stop the shake instance if it is shaking, and then it'll start the curatine again. And all that does is it calls shake on the camera shaker handler, passing in my public shake data, and assigns the instance of it. And then it waits the total duration of the shake plus one second, just so there's a small window where the shake isn't occurring. Just to show you that whole class, so you can see everything. There you go. Okay, let's get to testing. I'm going to go ahead and check restart so that begins as soon as I hit play. And I have a reference to my shake data, which I will be manipulating. Real quick, I'm going to change some settings and then I'll talk about them as I go. So I'm going to change the roughness to 0.5. I think the magnitude at 1 is okay. And I'm going to set the total duration to 2. Some things I can talk about without showing you the shake live, and that is the shakeables to effect. Here you'll see cameras, canvases, and objects. Also, one thing I want to point out is that each one of these entries will have a tooltip. Reading those tooltips can be a lot of help. First, if you want this shake to affect cameras, you must, of course, have cameras ticked. If you want to affect canvases, you must have canvases ticked and objects. This will be transforms and rigid bodies. Those are currently the supported objects. This is useful if you want a shake to perhaps only affect your camera, but not manipulate the objects in the scene. Above that, you have scaled time. When true, the shake will scale with your game time. So if you slow your game time down, the shake will also slow down. If you do not have this checked, the shake will run at normal time regardless of your game time. Further down, you have unlimited duration. Whenever you check this, you'll notice that the total duration box disappears, and when you uncheck it, it comes back. Whenever you have unlimited duration, the shake will loop seamlessly. Odds are, if you are using unlimited duration, you want to keep track of the shaker instance so that way you can stop it later. For this though, I'm going to be using a total duration of 2. A little further, you have fade in and fade out duration. If the total of these two values exceed total duration, then total duration is silently behind the scenes increased to the total of those two values. I'm going to set these both to zero, and even though I'm doing so, the shakes will still smooth in and out slightly just so that it's not abrupt. Beyond that, you have magnitude. This acts as a multiplier towards the influence. So if I were to hit play with one magnitude, you notice it's not moving very much, but if I change that to two, you'll see that it does go quite a bit further now. If you're wondering why it seemed to be snapping, there are a couple reasons for that. One, the roughness is really low. Two, there is no fade in time. And three, the seed is random. And I'll talk about these later and how you can combine them to make a better shake. Further down, you have magnitude noise. So if this is at zero, then this means the magnitude will be a constant two. Magnitude noise acts as a multiplier. So if it is 0.1, then the magnitude can be 90% of the current value, which is 2, or 110% of the current value. And if I were to bring this up to 1, then the magnitude could be anywhere between 0 and 4. I'm going to bring this down to 0 so that you can see how the curve works more easily. This curve is applied towards the magnitude over the duration of the shake. The shake is a total duration of 2 seconds, then this curve will run flat for two seconds. If I were to say edit this key and change it to zero, you can see there is now a slope, then the magnitude will slowly fade in until achieving full power at the end of the shake. Just to show you real quick that that's what's going on. Roughness is how quickly the shake will move between the influences. As you can see, this is moving pretty slow going up and down. If I were to increase the roughness, it would move at a much faster rate. So I'm going to change it from 0.5 to 3. And I'm actually going to get this out of here so that the curve's not affecting it. I'm going to bring this back down to 1. 
and you see it's slower. If I bring it all the way up to let's say 10, it's going to go much faster. Just like the magnitude curve, the roughness curve works the same way. It's how much roughness is applied over the time of the shake. And the noise works the same way as the magnitude. And below that we have the positional influence and the rotational influence. This is how the camera objects or canvases will shake. So if I hit play, and let me definitely turn down that roughness. Okay, now if I change the X to zero, you'll notice it's only going up and down and you can see it's rocking on the Z just a little bit. If I make that a little bit stronger, you can see how that works. Next, you have your invertible axes. This is if you want to randomly flip which direction this goes. For example, if you had X1 and I set this invertible to X, then your X would sometimes be one and sometimes it'd be negative one. This can be really useful if you want your shakes to behave in a certain way on one axis, but not on the other. If you're using a random seed, the invertible axes probably are not much help. This is because the shake is going to start in a random position in the influences of both rotational and positional. That's why with my fade in time being so low that it appears to jar randomly to one side. That is because it is starting the seed perhaps from the full value where it sets that offset immediately. Since when using a random seed that the shake can start on any side, it is essentially already invertible. Therefore, using this option in combination isn't really too helpful. Now, if I wanted to use invertible axes, I would probably untick random seed. I'm also going to remove this and change the invertible axes on the positional influence to nothing. In addition, I'm going to set Y to zero and then Z to zero on the rotation. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit play with a seed of zero. Notice how it starts the same way every time. Now if I were to change this invertible axis to X, now I'm going to actually bump the total duration down so that it happens more quickly here. You can see that it will now sometimes move left and it will sometimes move right. And this is how the randomly flipping of the axes works. An example of this is perhaps you wanted to kick the camera up and off to the side when your character was hitting the head. I know that X controls the up and down of rotation, so I'm gonna set this to five, and I'm going to go ahead and completely remove any positional influence. And I think I'm going to change the Y to three. This is the left and right of the camera rotation. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And right now it's always gonna kick up in the same direction. That's because I'm not randomizing the axes. So if I randomize the left and right on the Y, you notice that sometimes it will kick up to the left and sometimes it'll kick up to the right. As you can see, there's a lot of things you can do by manipulating these settings.